Um, but I think the biggest brush with process was when I built an e-commerce store in Indonesia, um, because that's what you do when you're 25. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so I do staying in a stable job um, scared me more than leaving. It took me a very long time to get my name out in the I mean, well, comparatively not long because I've just been here for 19 months. Well, I was going to say, you've only been here for 19 months, but yeah. not that very long. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of She's the Boss. If you're joining us here for the first time, please make sure that you click that subscribe button so that you're the first to know when I release a new video. I am joined today by Lucille Roach. Thank you for joining us, Lucille. Thank Lu you. Lucille is the founder of Asset Business Consultancy and you are based in Birmingham. Yes. So Lucille, tell us a little bit more about Asset Business Consultancy. What is it? What do you do? And how did you come to do it? So Asset Business Consultancy is a business that I formed last year. So the tail end of last year. And its purpose is to assist and better clients. So my role is as a business and career coach. So I just help people to achieve their business goals, their career goals. Um, and I started it because... I think it's so important. There are so many people that are living below their potential, living below their purpose, not knowing what their purpose is. And Asset Business Consultancy is designed to help people to find their purpose, to align that to their professional goals and help them to get success. Mm -hmm. And what led you down that path? What were you doing previously to this? So my background, so I'm a lawyer and I'm also a manager as well. So I um, first started coaching maybe about professionally about two years ago. So I signed up for a coaching program and it was a two day introductory course. Um, and I just really wanted to know what it was and kind of how it could help me because I just felt like something was lacking. I was missing something. I wasn't enjoying my job. So I thought, well, let me just try something and see what, where this leads me. And I went on the two-day instructory course and the coaching skills that they started teaching us were skills that I realised I'd been using throughout my eight-year career as a manager and I just hadn't realised it. So I had been helping people to achieve their goals, to overcome obstacles, but I didn't label it as coaching. It was just my role as a manager. So that's what kind of led me on this journey because I got a taste of it and I really enjoyed it. So I signed up for the full programme to then qualify as a coach. Mm -hmm. So how did you get from lawyer to manager? If you get what I'm asking, it sounds like. So, um, I mean, it's, so I started off doing criminal law and then I moved into personal injury. And then while I was in personal injury, a promotion came up for a supervisor. So I applied for that role. And then I did that for about a year there and I just wasn't happy. And then I found a job as a manager then working for um, a regulatory body. So that's then how I got into management. So then everything that I've done since then is around, is management based. Mm -hmm. So what was the original plan and how, how far have you de deviated from that plan? I think sometimes we think when we're kind of in our latter teenager years, or oh, I'm going to do this and that's mm. what I'm going to do. And it's just going to be this linear path, but yeah. yours hasn't been. No. How far from your original goal have you kind of strayed? Well, when I was in school, the only thing that I wanted to do was to be a lawyer. I wanted to help people. I wanted to um, help people who'd been wrongly accused of a crime they hadn't committed. I wanted to help people who wanted to rehabilitate themselves. But what I realised really quickly is that learning um, criminal law is more fun than practising it. Mm. So that's what I wanted to do when I started my journey. But as I got what I thought I wanted, I realized this is not what I like. So that's when I moved to another area of law. But that was like personal injury is my backup. That wasn't my original plan. Criminal law was my original plan. So for me, I think the common thread in everything that I've done is that core purpose of mine, which is to help other people. So everything that I've done in my career has been about that. So even though I am not doing what I originally set out to do when I was in school, which is to be a lawyer, I'm still fulfilling my core purpose, which is to help other people. And where does that core purpose come from? Is there something in your childhood that you can pinpoint and say, I, I witnessed an injustice there and I therefore want to help people? I don't think there was anything specific. I think I just remember from a young age just being aware that there were injustices, that there were people who had been accused of crimes that they hadn't committed and there was nobody really to kind of fight for them and to help them and to, um, 
to kind of put them back on the right path. And I've been really fortunate in, you know, my childhood and my upbringing. I've been really blessed. You know, I haven't wanted for anything. I haven't needed for anything. But I know that there are other people who haven't been as lucky as I am and who just need a help in hand so that, you know, there are people who potentially maybe come from more affluent families who get a leg up and get better advances in the world and people who come from less affluent families who don't get those same opportunities. They may have exactly the same skills, but they just don't have the same opportunities. And sometimes all it takes is for somebody to believe in you and to kind of say to you, you can do this. Mm -hmm. No, that's a, I really, I really admire the way that you've um, articulated that. In terms of kind of then moving from a lawyer into management and now into being a, a, a business owner, what has been, um, I guess, some of the most terrifying parts of the journey, if there's been any, and what have been the most fulfilling or uplifting parts of the journey? Terrifying is just the unknown of it. You know, I've always been employed, you know, um, I am still, you know, I'm juggling at the moment working full time and my business as well while my business is developing. And for me as an employee, everything is kind of ready made for you. The company's already set up, the marketing is already done for it, the systems are already in place, all of the templates and the documents that you need are in place. And as a business owner, that's not there for you. You have to be the one that creates everything. You have to market, you have to develop your website, you have to produce the content. So for me, that was scary. And I think I find myself at the beginning being really overwhelmed because I consume so much free information that there's like a limit to how free information, how far free information can take you. Like mm. after a while, it becomes very generic. It's not, it's not specific to your needs or anything at all. Um, so I think for me, that was the biggest obstacle is um, just the wealth of information that was out there and trying to make it specific to me. So I was almost trying to mold it to what I needed it to be when it was for maybe somebody else and then on the flip side the most rewarding aspect of it is actually the opposite of what I've just said just being able to have the freedom to create things in the way that I want them to to design my website in the way that I want it to be to design my logo to be the one that's the narrator of my own story so nobody else is saying to me you can't say this or you have to you know word it in this way everything that I am doing is coming from me it's coming from my personality it's coming from my experiences it's coming from my brain and that's liberating and exciting have there been any um incidents or occurrences or challenges on the way that made you think hmm have I made the right decision oh absolutely <laughs> so it's funny I joined a group coaching program in January um, and the reason I joined it is because like I said I was consuming so much free information which was very generic and I was just like this isn't working for me you know if I keep going down this path my business is never going to take off I am never going to get any clients and nobody's going to know about me so I signed up for the coaching um, program which is a 12-week coaching program and maybe a couple of weeks ago I had like a crisis of confidence and I was just like it's not working nothing I'm doing is working it's not gonna it's, it's just gonna fail because I wasn't seeing the results as quickly as I wanted to see them and I'm quite impatient I want things and I want them now I have this big massive vision and when things aren't happening in the way that I've envisioned that I'm just like well it's not working it's a failure and actually I realize it's not working because I'm not being strategic enough mm -hmm. no it's so interesting that's one of the um one of the key lessons that I try to share with my clients um mm. that you can't expect overnight results and Absolutely. when you see these success stories out there, it's like the, mm. that picture of the iceberg. You just see the tip of the yes. iceberg. You don't see yeah. everything yeah. behind it. No. And I think no. too often we are really excited about this vision or this mission that we mm -hmm. have. And we, we're doing things and we expect to see results. And when the results yeah. don't come, you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. it's not yeah. working. But actually it's not yeah. had time to get any traction. Exactly. Um, yeah. So there's things that I did years ago that only now I'm starting to see uh, the results from or mm. I guess gain the rewards from and at the yeah. time I wanted to see things there and then and it's interesting now when people can't remember oh, I saw you speaking at so-and-so um mm. would you like to come and speak at this and I'm like I don't even remember that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, long ago. so you're right sometimes you have to to be patient in the process but also making sure that you are strategic so you're not just doing things and jumping from one thing to the next that you actually have a clear strategy and you stick to yeah. it and you're consistent yeah. Um, one of the key things that I um, 
I had a challenge with when I started my business is lack of support. So not everybody around me was as supportive as I would have liked. How have the people, your friends and family, and even your work colleagues, how supportive or not supportive have they been? And what kind of impact has that made on your journey and the speed at which you've been able to move forward? I think I've been really fortunate in that people have been supportive of me. So like nobody has said to me, why are you doing this? Are you crazy? It's never going to work. The only exception to that, it's so funny, actually, it was my hairdresser. So I was sitting down and I was having my hair done and I don't think she meant it in the way that it came across. But now thinking about it, I realise where she was coming from. She's a business owner, obviously. So when she's given me advice about my business, she's coming from her own experience and her own background. And the way that she was talking to me was extremely negative. She was saying things like, you know, it's going to be really difficult. You're not going to see results for years and years and years. You're going to struggle. And actually that kind of weighed on me a little bit because I was like, why have you got to be so negative about it? Because you don't know my journey. You don't know how things are going to be for me. But I realised that when people say things like that to you, they're not talking about your own abilities and your own potential to do something. They're coming from their own perspective. Mm -hmm. They're saying that I don't think that I can do this, not that me personally can't do this. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably the only thing that I have to be wary of is that where somebody does say to me, that's going to be really difficult is to ask myself, well, where is that coming from? Is that coming from me or is that coming from them and their own issues? Because mm -hmm. I know what I need to be doing. I know that I have to be consistent and put in the work and put in the effort. And I the one that can measure my results and my success nobody else from the outside that doesn't know the day-to-day -day running of my business can say to me oh that's not going to work it may not have worked for you but i'm not you mm -hmm. i think so that is just about really powerful. i have to yeah i have to remind myself of who i am like black panther remember who you are <laughs> you know, you just have to rem but you do you have to remember that because yeah. sometimes you do forget and you get caught up in what other people think about you and you forget about what you think about yourself yeah, no, I think that's really powerful, um, really powerful way to put it. And it's true. And sometimes you can get your own voice can get drowned out by the naysayers and the people around you that are being negative. And a lot of the time it's not even about you. As you said, no. it's about them and, and their own yeah. self-limiting beliefs. And also exactly. not necessarily always just what they don't think they can do, but also they don't want to see you do it and leave them behind. Mm. And I think yes. sometimes... Yeah that can be it too. Like you can't go and be living. If you're living your best life and you're fulfilled and you're happy and you're generating income, but I'm here doing this thing that I don't particularly like and I'm too scared to make yeah. a change. How dare you mm -hmm. go and be happy and do what exactly. that you want to do. So exactly. yeah, I think it's definitely true. You have to remember, remember who you are. Mm -hmm. Who has been your greatest inspiration or motivation? Oh, I'm inspired by so many different people. I think, first of all, I'm going to say my mum, just because she's a hustler. Like, she works. She just works and works and works. And, um, yes, yeah, sometimes she can be a little bit negative about herself, but she has the most amazing work ethic that I have ever witnessed. So if there's something that she wants, I mean, she's fortunate in her work because she, you know, she works at a hospital, she does nursing, that if she needs more money, she can do overtime to be able to get that money. So sometimes she will work days and days back to back just because she knows I need to get this money for this specific purpose. So I'm going to do all I can to put in the work. And I think for me, that's something that's inspiring because it, that, that's what demonstrates that this is what I have to do. If I want success, then I have have to do whatever it is that's within my power to be able to continually put in that work so I can see that return mm -hmm. and that's so important mm. um that's so important and if you you're lacking people around you that have a strong work ethic yeah it can be quite difficult to then develop your own strong work ethic exactly um, so it's I think it's and moms are just such fantastic um role models generally and a lot of the mm. women that I speak to always say that their mom having that kind of hustler spirit or entrepreneur yeah. or whatever it yeah. is, um, has really had an impact on them. Hmm. Who else has inspired you? Um, I'm going to say Oprah. Uh, just because of where she came from. Mm -hmm. She came from such a horrendous upbringing and background, all the abuse that she suffered and people not believing in her and, you know, trying to pursue her goals and getting knocked down. But again, she's still 
kept going. She fought. She kind of kicked down doors. She made such positive changes. And now she's kind of opening the door for everybody else to kind of come through. So she hasn't just got her success and said, see ya, bye. She's kind of been like, I've got my success. Come and sit at my table with me. Let mm -hmm. me help you. Let me encourage you to grow. Let me give you a platform, you know, with own and everything. Let me give you a platform so that you can represent yourself as well. Yeah. I agree. Oprah is one of the reasons I do everything that I do. She's always been a huge inspiration of mine. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it is that thing of if she can get to where she's got to, coming from where she came from, how dare yeah. I not try to do and be the best exactly. um, that I can be? Because mm -hmm. I didn't come yeah. from the background anywhere near as traumatic as hers. So, no. Truly mm -hmm. inspiring. On a day to day yeah. basis, what do you find um, the most exciting about working in your business? Um, again, it's the creative process. I'm a creative person, you know, I'm an ideas person and it's being able to translate those ideas into actual actions and intentions. Mm -hmm. So from getting it down onto paper to then seeing a, a reality. So one of the things I'm working on at the moment is my sales page. So I've got a website, but I, I, I wanted to get a sales page. So I signed it with ClickFunnels and I'm going through the process of just creating that sales page. And then as I keep previewing it, as I'm going along, I'm like, this looks amazing. It's it's like everything from my head is now on the screen for everybody else to kind of see and to consume and that's just really exhilarating for me. No, it, you made me feel excited then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna see it. <laughs> I'll send you the link when it's done. <laughs> Please do. And, and that kind of was a nice segue into my next question. Um, tools, what are some of the most useful tools that you found in business? So I know for me Trello might be my number one favorite hmm. business tool to kind of organize my time. What are some of the, the business tools that you found useful for you and why? Canva has been really useful just for being to be able to be able to create content to be posted on my social media because there are so many images there I can take my own images and save them there and just attach my own words to it so that's been something that's really really useful for me. Um, MailChimp is another tool that I'm using, which is an email marketing tool. So again, that's been really useful for me to be able to, um, to begin my email list and to be able to connect with my audience then through email. So that's been really good. Um, and just um, my iPhone my iPhone being able to record videos and to be able to make notes because like I said I'm an ideas person I have ideas going through my mind constantly and just being able to have my phone close by where I can just take notes of the things that I'm thinking of and then transfer them into even just like a, a notepad or something else so just being able to have that too where I can record videos and then I can make notes as well that's really useful. Mm -hmm. What have you, um, through this process, learned about yourself that you maybe didn't know before you embarked on this journey? That I am more determined than I actually realised because even when I've been at my lowest and I've been thinking this isn't going to work, I've kind of snapped myself back into focus and be like, no, you know, what, what, remember what it is that you're doing this. So for me, I think it's my resilience, that, that ability just to kind of to keep going, even when I haven't seen the results that I've immediately wanted to see, it's still having that determination to keep going and pushing forward. Mm -hmm. what, um, what is the most influential? And I, I didn't ask if you're a reader, but has there been any business book or just or not even a business book, but just a book in general that's really inspired or motivated you? Yes, yeah, so there are two. So there's Grant Cardone at the 10x rule, because that made me realise that I'm not doing nearly enough of what I thought I was doing. So if I'm thinking I need to be making a thousand connections on LinkedIn, I need to 10 times that. And if I'm thinking I need to be making a um, hundred connections, I need to 10 times that. So whatever I'm doing, I need to magnify and kind of increase what I'm doing to be able to see those tangible results. Um, another book as well that I read is by Brendan Bouchard, which which is the um, high performing habits, I think it's called. So again, it's about high performers and how it is that they plan their day, how it is that they structure themselves and just being able to um, be more focused and to strategize and to ask, uh, and just to continually ask yourself questions, you know, how is this going to help? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this in this way? So those have been really useful. And how good are you at that? Like, how have you found, so one of the things that some of my clients um, 
ask me is how do you know what is a good decision to make how do I know if I should work with that client even though I don't like them or Mm. like how have you had I assume that the book has obviously impacted that but what kind of process do you use to determine good business versus I shouldn't really do that because when I write down the actions that I'm taking, I have to challenge myself as to, okay, then well, how is this going to help me? So if I'm saying that, you know, I need to be posting on Instagram, okay, then well, first of all, what am I going to be posting? How is that going to drive business to my website? How is that going to put money into my pocket? I think about the purpose behind what it is that I'm doing and I kind of try to map it, okay, then so where will this lead? So by posting on Instagram, it's generating more exposure to my target clients, more people are going to be knowing about me I'm going to become more visible on the explore page so that when I then um, have my email marketing I can then contact everybody on Instagram to say hey come over to my email marketing side of things and then I can target them that way so I'm always thinking about the purpose behind what I was doing whereas before I think I was just doing what I thought I had to do and I went to a networking event and um, I'm so sorry but I actually can't remember the woman's name she was on um, she was on The Apprentice um, Khadija I think Khadija that's her name and I don't watch The Apprentice so I didn't know her before and one of the things that she said was that when she started her business she was doing what she um, what she thought was expected of her rather than what she actually needed to do so she had a cleaning business and what she did is that she hired she bought a load of um, vehicles for her cleaning business so she can put her logo all over it and actually she was saying that was such a huge waste of money because what she could have done instead is just hire people that have their own vehicles she didn't need to buy the vehicles herself yeah. and put the logo on there <laughs> and I think that's exactly what I was doing at the beginning I was like right okay I need to get all of these flyers I need to design all of this information actually how is that actually going to help me how is it going to take my business forward how is that going to do it better than me speaking to people and talking about what it is that I'm doing and then direct them to my website where all that information is anyway yeah so it's about being more um targeted about what it is that i'm doing and why am i doing this how is it going to help me mm-hmm. when you um when you started and decided okay this is what i want to do mm-hmm. and you then made the decision to go out and start telling people how yeah. confident were you in doing that and were there any situations where you kind of lost your call and maybe reverted back to introducing yourself as what you do in your day job as opposed to what you do for your business yeah so when I first started I mean I I'd say that I'm an introvert I'm not an introvert I'm not an introvert I just don't like new people do you know what I mean like I'm that person it's so funny because I'm such a friendly person that like new people I'm just like "Mm, I I don't know about you yet I need to I need to warm up to you and feel a connection with you so um sometimes when I'm going to networking events it's I I feel awkward sometimes because I'm like I'm not used to speaking to strangers I can speak to people that I know but strangers that's difficult for me so um so I think I struggled with that and I struggled first of all with my elevator pitch in knowing what it is that I wanted to say and how it is that I wanted to introduce myself um and I think at first when I started doing it I was talking about you know me 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 this is what I do this is what I do rather than how it is that I could help other people and I think one of the really useful things that happened is that when I gave my elevator pitch at one of the networking events it was giving feedback to each other and that's the feedback that I got and I hadn't realized that that's what I was doing or that that was having um potentially a negative impact on the people that were receiving my message so um I think I'm better now at being clear about what it is that I am doing, but I still need to work on being able just to randomly approach somebody and start talking about what it is that I'm doing. If somebody approaches me that I'm better at speaking about it, but I probably wouldn't seek them out and say, hi, excuse me, let me just tell you about me and what it is that I do, because I just feel really awkward about it. Yeah, I just don't. I, I don't see the value in it for me. I know some people find the value in it, but for me, I prefer engineered networking situations. Yeah. So identifying people that I want to meet and arranging to yes. go out for coffee. Well, I don't drink coffee, mm. but normally Let, they, yeah, <laughs> <same. laughs> they don't have coffee out of a hot chocolate or a juice. Yeah. And I just yeah. find that it makes it lo- a lot less stressful. And actually, yeah. sometimes I find in the kind of traditional networking um, environment, you end up just speaking to loads of people. And when you're someone that, I don't know about yourself, but for me, I'm a lot, um, I, I'd say I take on people's energies. So when mm. I'm in kind of those networking events where I have to keep going from person to person to person, I can feel at the end yeah. of it, like my energy has been drained out of me and I've taken yes. on everybody else's energies. 
So I, I personally don't find it that beneficial for me. Mm. Um, so I just don't do it. <laughs> and I think what, I've, what I'm doing now is, is that I'm being, again, more targeted about the networking events that I go to. Whereas mm-hmm. when I first started, because I didn't know any different, I'd go to every single one of them, not mm-hmm. knowing if it was going to work. And I'd just be like, I'm just not feeling this. Like you said, yeah. energy. Like, I'm just, I'm not feeling this energy. Like, these aren't my kind of people. I'm not going to get what I want from these people. So, you know, I've learned to kind of remove myself from situations. And you're right, there's nothing better than that one-on-one connection that you could afford with somebody and that you can spend the time talking to somebody that actually wants to hear about what it is that you're doing yeah yeah that's that's definitely for me I remember one of the last kind of generic networking events I went to I ended up being stuck with this guy talking about widgets for like 40 minutes and I remember (laughs) that day saying no more I'm not doing this anymore (laughs) if it's not about a specific topic where somebody's speaking and then afterwards you mingle and I'm just not doing it exactly exactly you mentioned before that at this networking event you received some criticism. Now, mm-hmm. I'm not very good at dealing with criticism. It's, some, it's a work mm-hmm. in progress. I acknowledge it. I'm aware of it. I'm working yeah. on it. How mm-hmm. did you cope with that criticism and how do you cope with criticism generally? Because in business, you oh, have I like to be resilient. Criti- I, yeah, I, I don't like criticism either. I think, um, especially unsolicited criticism, like I, if I didn't ask you, why are you telling me? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, you know what, what's the purpose of you telling me? Because like, is it coming from a good place? Like, I think it's in the way that you say it as well. Like, mm-hmm. if you're going to say to me, do you know what, that was rubbish, then I'm going to be really defensive and I'm just going to be looking at you sideways. Whereas if you say to me, okay, that was good, but you know, these are the things that you can improve on, I'm going to receive that better. So the criticism that I got was from somebody who... Um, again he's perhaps not my kind of person he's not the person that I would associate with or kind of have a connection with and his delivery um wasn't great he was just kind of like you know you you know you're doing it all wrong you need to do it this way and when when somebody says that to me I immediately shut down and kind of don't listen to what anybody says Mm -hmm. but there was another woman in the group and she kind of rephrased it in a different way which made me more receptive to receiving it so I think it does depend on who it is the criticism is coming from and what their motivation is for the criticism and have you mastered the poker face yet because i haven't <laughs> listen uh, yeah from from my previous roles i've had to master the poker from sitting in court and listening to some of the evidence that i've heard from sitting in front of a panel and hearing the evidence i've had to be able to keep my face um kind of neutral and not to express how I'm feeling but sometimes I do slip like I can't I can't do it all the time and sometimes I do slip and, I, and I'm like didn't they just say that really? <laughs> um, and my eyes are very expressed like you can tell the mood that I am in from the look of my fa- on my face do you know what I mean like I can walk into work and people can be like do you know what I'm just gonna leave you for an hour and then I'm gonna come back and chat to you because I can get that you know things aren't going so well for you right mm-hmm. now Mm-hmm. So, uh, so it's a struggle. It depends on the environment that I'm in. That sometimes I can master my poker face, and other times I'm just like, I, it's just too much. It's too much energy to master it. I can't. I can't fake it. <laughs> Where? So you've obviously in. Um, you just provide an example of sitting in court, and that helped you to work on that poker mm. face. What other skills, or um, yeah, I guess skills have you acquired that are really useful in business, but you acquired them from the world of work? I guess it's the ability to, um, to probe and to ask questions because doing what I do in, you know, there's a lot of investigative work that needs to go on. So there's a lot of rocks that you need to unturn just to be able to find the answers to questions. So for me, it's that um, ability to be able to kind of keep asking and trying to keep getting into, well, what is it that you really mean by this? What is it that you're actually saying? What is it that you really want to achieve? And what makes this more significant than that? So I think it's my ability to be able to probe and to um, kind of assess what people are saying, just to kind of read into things that people aren't necessarily verbalising, that I can kind of hear in their unspoken words. So, you know, there's times that I've been sitting with clients and I've been asking a question and they've been giving me maybe one or two word answers. And that's like a big sign that's, that, you know, there's something deeper underneath there that they're kind of holding back. So I'll move on to something else and then go back to the question that I asked before. Well, you know, because then by that time they're a little bit more comfortable because I've sensed they're not very comfortable with that question. So let me leave it for a bit and then I'm going to come back. But don't think I've forgotten. I'm coming back to this. I want my answer. <laughs> I'm going to keep digging until I get the answer. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. Um, and finally, you obviously have a lot of experience in so many different arenas and avenues. And, and now I'm 
I'm wishing you all of the best with moving this forward in business. But for somebody else that may be um, in working in a job that maybe they don't like, or even a job that they do like, but they can see themselves doing something more and going into business, what three pieces of advice would you give to them? Um, the first thing I would say is to know what your purpose is. For me, your purpose is so fundamental because everything that you do then links back to your purpose. So mm -hmm. if you want to start a business, what's the basis of that? Why is it that you want to do it? For me, it's because I want to help people and I want to help them to find their purpose. And I think even if you get lost and you get stuck, your purpose is the guiding light that's going to bring you back to reality. So if you keep focusing on your purpose, you'll always be on the right path. Um, the second thing is, is to not go it alone, to kind of get somebody else to help you. So a mentor, a coach, anybody that is somebody who is kind of removed from you who do, you probably don't know personally that can just give you that impartial guidance and kind of challenge you in a way that perhaps your friends or family won't challenge you um, and then the third thing I would do is to say to just um, focus on one thing at a time don't try to overwhelm yourself by doing too much because that's what I started doing at the business at, at the beginning I tried to do everything at the same time and I just overwhelmed myself and I almost crippled my own progress because I wasn't very clear about okay then what do I need to do so start with one thing and then do that one thing until it's done then move on to the next thing mm -hmm. that's great advice and if people want to find out more about you and your business, where can they find the information? So you can go to my website, www.assetbusinessconsultancy.co.uk. And then on Instagram, I am Lucille, L-U-C-I-L-L-E, row, R-O underscore. So you can follow me on Instagram as well. Awesome. Thank you. I am wishing you, as I said, every success with um, the future of your business. And I'm looking forward to coming back and doing a She's the boss, female entrepreneur stories. Where are they now? Yes, <laughs> and that would how be cool. The division. That would be fabulous. Yes. So thank you so much for taking thank part. You. Really appreciate it. And for you who yeah. are watching at home, as usual, as I say every week, if there's anything that has been shared in here that's really resonated with you, please write a comment in the comment box. Please click that like button. If you think there's anybody out there that can benefit from hearing these conversations, please share in your networks. And if you haven't already done so, as usual, Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you're the first to know when a new video is released. And remember, think big, take action and keep pushing. Bye.